Hey there, and welcome to Breakfast with Mark Daniels for Friday, March 6th, 2020. Weather for Long Island, well, temperatures will be 45 to 50 over the weekend. Nighttime lows, 30 to 35. There's a good chance of showers today. Today is National Day of Unplugging. It's the first Friday in March, and it kicks off a 24-hour period from sundown to sundown to unplug, unwind, relax, and do things other than using today's technology, electronics, and social media. Easier said than done for a lot of us. And even if you can't unplug from everything, maybe give it a shot to unplug from half of the things that you normally do. And you'll probably feel better. I'll give it a try. Today is also National Dentist Day. Yep, an entire day devoted to one of the most feared people in your life. And it's not really the dentist, not really him or her. It's what he or she (laughs) might do to you when you arrive. Basically, if you see your dentist, say thank you to the person who keeps your teeth in tip-top shape every six months. And today is also National Oreo Cookie Day. Yep, the Oreo cookie's been around for a long time. Nabisco developed the first Oreo, they called it Oreo Biscuit, in 1912 in New York City. And today, the block where the factory was located is known as Oreo Way. The Oreo Biscuit was named the Oreo Sandwich, and then it was renamed in 1948 the Oreo Cream Sandwich. And now we just call them Oreos. My favorite way to eat them is to twist them apart and eat each side individually. I guess it makes each cookie last a little longer. And they're pretty darn good in ice cream. And finally, this is one of my favorites. It's National Employee Appreciation Day. It focuses the attention on all employees in all industries and employers across the country in businesses and organizations hopefully will plan some sort of employee recognition and celebration. And I hope at the very least that maybe your employer will provide some nice lunch for the staff today. I mean, really, nothing shows employees that they're appreciated than having your employer provide free lunch or breakfast. Well, maybe a salary bump or a bonus, but (laughs) let's go with the lunch. Let's shoot for that. So this weekend's going to be a little tough on me, and I know I'm in the minority on this, because this is the weekend that we set our clocks ahead an hour before we go to bed on Saturday night, and then we wake up on Sunday morning to daylight saving time. I think I'm probably one of the few people who does not like this change, mostly because we lose an hour, and it makes Sunday go by really fast. Before you know it, it's 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Wasn't it 1 o'clock? And I know most people like it because it technically extends daylight till almost 8.30, 8.40 in the middle of June. But to me personally, that extra daylight is not worth stealing an hour of my time in March. And we have to wait till November to get it back. And that weekend, when we go back to standard time and we set our clocks back an hour, oh, that is that is one of my favorite weekends. I had always hoped that they would make the time change during a regular workday, let's just say, I don't know, like a Tuesday. So when you're at work, noon becomes one o'clock. And that means one less hour of work. And you should be, and you should be paid for it. But nope, they take it out of your weekend. Most clocks change themselves, your computer, your laptop, whatever, electronic device, your phone, they all change themselves, cable boxes, but there are a few in my house that don't, one of which is my microwave. You have to figure out how to do it, and since we don't have the instruction booklet anymore, well, it's always got the wrong, (laughs) it's always got the wrong time. And then again, we have another big kitchen clock, it sits on a wall, and it's hung by a nail. Now, changing the time on the clock once I removed it from the wall isn't the issue. The problem is lining up the nail on the wall with the slot in the the back of the clock. That in itself will probably take me about an hour. And I'm guessing Sunday night, you'll probably look outside at, I don't know, 7.30, quarter to 8, and you'll say, wow, it's still light out. Yep, welcome to daylight savings time. So before I let this go, I'd like to do a Breakfast with Mark Daniels scientific not poll, if you will. Little research. Daylight savings time. Love it or loathe it. You can comment on Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube. And since it's the first weekend in March and we have daylight savings time coming, warmer temperatures are on the way, a new season is on the way, St. Patrick's Day will be here before you know it, It's probably a weekend that you'll be thinking the same thing I am. It's almost time for spring cleaning. 
And spring cleaning isn't just about cleaning your bathroom or vacuuming the carpet. No, this is a deep cleanse of your entire house. Spring cleaning is a time when we humans come out of our winter hibernation, if you will, and look around us and say, what is all this stuff? It's like the space in your home gets renewed. Like when you first moved in. Remember all that space? And now, (laughs) was there a wall there? Spring cleaning can be a daunting task. And so much so that Newsday thought it was their obligation to print an entire step-by-step guide on how to get through it. And you can find it at Newsday.com. There are two people on this planet that really like spring cleaning. One is me, and the other is Danny Tanner from Full House. And it's time to attack the enemy. Grease, grime, slime, sludge. Yeah, he's really into spring cleaning, isn't he? Steph, it may be spring cleaning to you and me, but to Dad, it's Christmas. (laughs) And that's kind of how it is in my house. I'm Danny Tanner trying to excite the troops, the other members of my house, that if we put in a little bit of work for a couple of days, that the end result is going to feel like a whole new house. And that's easier said than sold. I guess it was last spring when I convinced my family that, you know, let's make this a purging weekend. It'll be just one weekend. We can get it all done and we'll feel great after and the house will look great. It didn't really go over well, but once we started, it was amazing at how hard everybody worked. I was doing some stuff outside in the garage, and I heard the vacuum cleaner running inside my house, and I came in to see, you know, because it was on for a long time. And I looked, and my wife was literally vacuuming the drapes, vacuuming the walls, vacuuming the crevices in the ceiling. (laughs) She, She was a maniac. My daughter's room, when she got done with it, didn't have 43 pieces of clothing on the floor. There weren't scattered shoes about the floor either, which always posed a tripping hazard, especially at night. And the room smelled like like Mr. Clean. I could actually fit both my cars in the garage without having to shimmy between car and stuff. And one of the key things to successful spring cleaning I've learned is to be able to either donate or throw it out. They say if you haven't worn a piece of clothing in a year, probably time to donate it. If you have stacks and stacks of papers that go way back, like I do in some places of my house, chances are most of those documents are in digital form and easily accessible. And another area that I realize is a great place to start for spring cleaning is my workbench. Maybe you have one too. I know that every time that I buy anything and I have leftover parts, I end up saving the parts thinking, well, maybe I could use this someday. (laughs) But I can tell you this, if you haven't used it in five years, chances are you should toss it. And if you ever did need it, there's probably an Ace Hardware store right down the block. The one thing they do say about spring cleaning is not to feel like you have to get it all done in one day. You could probably spread it out over a couple of weekends, and not that you have to devote your entire weekend to cleaning, but maybe a couple of hours on a Saturday or a Sunday, you'll probably end up catching up by the 1st of April. So I guess I'll spring my spring cleaning itinerary on the rest of the family this weekend, and (laughs) I'll let you know how it goes. And that'll do it for this episode of Breakfast with Mark Daniels. Thank you so much for listening. Breakfast with Mark Daniels is available on Facebook, Instagram, Spotify, YouTube, Apple Podcasts, iHeart Podcasts, A-L-E-X-A. Yeah, I have to spell it because I've gotten too many complaints about people saying that their devices go off when I actually say her name. So, buzzsprout.com and wherever podcasts are heard. Just search Breakfast with Mark Daniels. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you back here on Monday for Breakfast with Mark Daniels.